Please welcome the First Lady of the United States, Nancy Reagan, and Her Royal Highness the Princess of Wales. America's First Lady and Britain's Princess Diana visit a rehabilitation centre for young Americans, victims of the drugs epidemic that's sweeping the United States and much of the Western world. Some of these young people have tried a frightening variety of illegal drugs. Hi, my name's Aaron. I'm 15 years old. The drugs I've done are pot, alcohol, speed, cocaine, ups, downs, um, prescriptions over the counters, PCP, LSD, THC, uh, mushrooms, hash, hash oil, trash drugs, and some others that I can't remember right now. Um, Parents I've been doing are drugs encouraged for four to take years, part in and the I've been straight for 31 days. And also to show I their feel emotions. I'm relieved about you being in the program because it seems to make my life a lot more calmer. Not having police knocking on my door, light shining in the house. I love you, Jackie. I'm really pleased that you've taken Speaking this openly, refreshing even time in a crowded to hall can help parents get your and strength. Children. And I really look forward to our getting our home situation continued. Love you. Love you, Mom. Nancy Reagan's open support for this program called Straight reflects the growing concern over a youth and drugs problem which started in San Francisco in the late 1960s, back in the comparatively innocent days of flower power. Smoking marijuana became part of America's youth culture. But today, the drug situation has changed dramatically. It's hard drugs the police are after. These two people were behind the counter. Oh, yeah. They're definitely going. This raid in a Miami suburb is on a coke parlor, a place where dealers trade in cocaine. What else can it be? Oh, you wouldn't really believe the excuses they come up with. They're, they're telling us that the you raid is successful. People in Two here, suspected dealers are arrested, and the quantity of cocaine is confiscated. Right here's, here's, here's ten. Twenty dollars is here. Twenty five dollars is over here. It's by no means certain, though, that the suspects will go to jail. Drug-related arrests have become so commonplace. Another part of Miami, and another drugs raid. The information is that drug dealers are operating in the apartment block. More drugs are seen. This time, a bag of amphetamine pills. A disturbing development in the United States comes from the laboratory, designer drugs. Skillful chemists have opened up a whole new world of powerful artificial drugs, as pharmacologist Dr. Gary Henderson explains. The latest compound that we're seeing is over a thousand times potent as heroin. You can make it short-acting, long-acting, just by tinkering around, making subtle changes. Secondly, we use the term designer drugs because they are merchandised almost as designer items. Many addicts use these new, untried drugs without hesitation. I used it because it was cheaper. I got a more intense high out of it. Anyone using designer drugs is taking a terrible risk. By law, all new drugs coming onto the market have to be carefully tested first. But with the new synthetic okay. drugs, the users the become the back. guinea pigs. Oops. Okay, I'm just relax. Tap gently. This woman is in her 30s. She looks twice her age. We started seeing something very dramatic, and that was young people being brought into our hospital who were completely frozen unable to move, unable to talk. Now, these patients look for all the world like elderly people with severe Parkinson's disease. Such are the disturbing findings of American neurologist Dr. William Langston, people who've become prematurely aged and crippled through drug abuse. This man is another victim of the designer drugs. How old are you, David? 28. But it's cocaine in its natural form that has become the most common drug in the United States. The illegal trade is worth thousands of millions of dollars a year, and customs officials always seem to be fighting a losing battle against the smugglers. The main source of cocaine is South America, particularly Peru, Bolivia and Colombia. 
The Amazonian jungles east of the Andes provide ideal growing conditions for the coca plant. But not even the jungle can hide the smugglers' landing strips from the Peruvian police. A recent operation against the drug traffickers took the Peruvian police to the remote eastern region of Loreto Province, over 1,000 kilometers from the capital, Lima. The police have powers to confiscate the aircraft used by the smugglers to hop their way northwards towards the Caribbean. These aircraft were part of a network reaching right into the United States. With the American customs unable to stop the smugglers, the US administration now gives increasing amounts of aid to South American governments to help to attack the cocaine problem at its source. The raid against this jungle outpost was part of Operation Condor. Two major production centers were eliminated several suspects arrested. The American help is channeled via the Drug Enforcement Agency, a branch of the US Justice Department. But the smugglers who operated from here were clearly well-funded themselves, with enough supplies and equipment to make them entirely self-sufficient, even in such a remote area. According to the local police command, there are 43 secret airfields in the eastern region alone. Each one is worth a fortune to the big racketeers and provides cash to local peasants far in excess of anything they could earn legitimately. And this is where the cash is created, in a jungle laboratory now deserted. Most of the smugglers manage to escape. The smugglers even brought in a powerful generator to provide power for their illicit operation. Not much skill is needed to complete the first processing stage. The local peasants, who use the leaf of the coca plant as a stimulant, rub it with limestone to increase its potency. In the laboratory, industrial chemicals are mixed with the leaf compost to separate the non-active agents. The resulting liquid is sieved through muslin bags to leave a muddy compound. This is the basic raw cocaine with the main impurities now removed. Yeah. The next stage involves what looks like a sunbed. In fact, it's a homemade apparatus to dry the mixture under constant heat, baking the cocaine into solid cakes. These can then be crushed into powder. After packaging, the cocaine at this stage, about 90% pure, is ready for the long and lucrative journey to the cities of North America. Small fortunes will be made along the way, and millions of dollars, illegally earned dollars, will also filter back into the economies of the producer countries. Another major source of drugs bound for North America, the Mexican highlands in Sinaloa province, inland from the Pacific seaboard. This is Operation Falcon, a drive by the Mexican authorities against the drug growers. A flourishing marijuana plant. Growing conditions here are ideal and cultivation costs are minimal. <laughs> in the next field, poppies. They produce opium, which in its turn yields heroin. In full bloom, the poppy is one of nature's glories. Yet when its pods are slit, out comes the sticky, raw opium. The United States has been able to place more political and economic pressure on its neighbor Mexico than on other Latin American countries in the drive to eliminate the drugs problem at source. 
And that is the main aim of Operation Falcon, destroy the drug-producing plants. Tons of drugs are intercepted after the plants have been harvested. It's all put to the torch, another success in the campaign to break the drugs link between North and South America. Halfway across the world and a journey into the Himalayas to the wild northwest frontier province of Pakistan. It's advisable to have an armed guard here. Overhead, Pakistan Air Force planes fly sorties along the border with Afghanistan. It might impress the Soviet-backed Afghan government, but up here in the mountains, the tribesmen deride the central government. The national forces of law and order are treated as unwelcome strangers on the northwest frontier. It's up in these mountains that the opium poppy flourishes on both sides of the Afghan-Pakistan border. An estimated 85% of all the heroin reaching Britain comes from this region. It's a rocky, rugged landscape where poppies are about the only crop that grows. And it's a place where smuggling has been a way of life for hundreds of years. The whole region is also officially out of bounds to foreigners, and our camera team had to make contact with local tribal leaders before making this journey along the heroin trail. The contact is Ali Akbar Afridi, the local Malik chief. He says he knows nothing personally about the heroin trade, and he says he would try to stop it if he had the resources. Hello. But he gives permission for the team to travel right into the Khyber Pass to one of the main heroin centers. This is the village of Landi Kotal. It's the source of some of the cheapest and purest heroin in the world. The team was warned not to film in the village, and so a meeting was arranged on a mountain path with two local traders. They produced a kilo bag of brown heroin and wanted to sell it for $1,800. It would be worth 50 times that amount on the streets of London, a huge profit margin for anyone prepared to take the risk. Uh, this is brown heroin. A larger town, Barra, just inside tribal territory. Barra has been famous for many years as a center for buying guns, but with the boom in the drugs trade over the past five years or so, the bazaar has become a meeting place for drug dealers too. Traders have become the middlemen to transport the heroin, many using the old established supply routes by which weapons and other contraband goods have evaded police and customs posts in the past. The Pakistani port of Karachi is the next staging point along the trail. By now, the drug will probably be packaged and disguised as ordinary merchandise. There could even be whole sacks full of the stuff hidden amongst a shipment of grain, rice or fertilizer. There are as many as 3,000 Arab dhows operating out of Karachi harbor. There's just not enough manpower or equipment to check all the cargoes. And though no one will admit it, corruption is a major problem. Policemen and customs officials earning less than $100 a month are easy targets for bribery. The visiting British Home Office Minister David Mellor watched the customs operation with interest. Britain is increasing its assistance to Pakistan to help tighten up security, especially in Karachi. Like the Americans, the British government wants to stop the trade at its source. This is the customs area at London's Heathrow Airport. 
security has become much stricter at airports, with the recent increase in terrorist attacks as well as in drug trafficking. But the smugglers still use the airlines. The operation can be carried out quickly, and the rewards are high. Oh, yeah. 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 No. The customs officials treat every piece of baggage, every item, however innocent looking, as a potential hiding place. Often it's not the drug dealers themselves who take the risks. They employ carriers known as mules to bring in the drugs, earning perhaps the equivalent of six months' wages in a single run. Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher's message to all drug smugglers is clear. We're after you. The pursuit will be relentless. Relentless. The effort will get greater and greater until we've beaten you. This is such an important thing uh, and so important for the protection of our young people and for everyone that it mustn't be hampered for lack of resources. We've never, never uh, skimped in any way on the resources for law and order. London has always had a drugs problem to a greater or lesser extent. But in the last five years, English provincial towns like Derby have become the targets of the drug pushers. The police have a target too. And this is a raid by officers of the drug squad. Police already have a search warrant. Oh, the house has been yeah. under observation for several days. What about this? The police find a pipe for smoking drugs. And bits of paper to wrap up individual drug portions. The search is thorough, but no large amounts of drugs are found. There is enough evidence, though, to charge two people with possession. Another raid in Derby. The gear? It's a typical situation. Oh, yeah. Young, unemployed people living in poor accommodation. Caught with a quantity of heroin, another young offender will come before the courts. But the problem is not confined to the underprivileged. A young man makes an essential trip into the village. He's from a wealthy background, educated in private schools and Hi, at uh, Oxford University. Hi, can I have two packets of syringes? Yet six days a week, he comes here to buy syringes and heroin on prescription. He's one of the small group of people who takes advantage of Britain's much criticized system of supplying registered addicts with heroin over the chemist counter. And no sooner is 26-year-old Martin back in the car in front of his two-year-old son, then he's ready for his first heroin <laughs> fix of the day. Johnny, okay, okay. <laughs> He'll do this every eight or nine hours. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, okay, it's all right, okay, Johnny. Okay, we're gay, we're gay. Martin has been a heroin addict for the past eight years. His wife, Joanne, has been addicted for 15 years. They live here on income from a property trust. Both come from wealthy families. But now they're in deep financial trouble, owing drug dealers as much as £20,000. There seems to be no escape. One disturbing development is the growing number of babies who are already heroin addicts on the day they're born. They inherit the addiction from their mothers. This is a young Liverpool couple, both of whom used to be heroin users, with their young child. Yeah. The baby was born an addict, but after four months of intensive care, he's healthy again. His no. parents, too, have abandoned the drug, but the family is not yet united. Until the couple have proved they can stay off heroin, the social services are keeping the child in a foster home.
A bag of drugs worth a fortune to dealers and potential misery for Britain's growing number of heroin addicts. The official British attitude, shared by almost all governments, is clear. Destroy the drugs before they destroy their victims.